All right. All right, Vinny, take it away. We got the screen. You're just still on mute. <laughs> it, it is. It is the problem of the century. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so funny because you responded to the question I asked. Oh, also, really? Yeah, totally. <laughs> thank you for saying I was on mute. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, uh, well, listen. Thank you so much for the for the nice intro and, um, you know, I, I appreciate the invite uh, to speak to you guys. Um, this is actually a topic that I'm like, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I'm just super interested in. And I think, uh, you know, CDPs are something that all marketing operations professionals need to keep an eye on. Um, I think they're one of those technologies that could potentially um, uh, become a competitive advantage for you if you jump in early. Um, but, uh, you know, in any case, I've, I've done this presentation a, a couple of times, making the rounds and such, and I just wanted to, to share my knowledge with this group. And hopefully I can learn, uh, you know, once we get to the question answer session, uh, part of the, the session, I can learn a little bit more about um, maybe some of the scenarios that you have if you're using a CDP or if, uh, if you're considering one and, and just learn a little bit more from you and what's happening in the real world out there. So without further ado, just jump right into it. Um, what, let's talk about first what a CDP is and what it isn't. Um, and I find it useful first to sort of uh, eliminate all of the things that it's not because CDPs, especially people who work in IT, who do data management work and all that stuff, you start explaining to them what a CDP is and then they, they basically go into their grab bag of of usual tricks and usual technologies. And they're like, oh, well, that sounds like this. Oh, and that sounds like this. It's not, <laughs> and here's why. So, so first, MDM. I find that a lot of people confuse CDPs with like a poor man's MDM or master data management solution. <laughs> um, MDMs are usually IT driven. It can be, you know, data team driven, depending on where that data team is, but they're, they're usually governed uh, and, and driven by IT. They are organization wide. They're not activity based. They're really about maintaining a master record for every contact and every account within an organization. They are supposedly the source of truth in an organization about a particular contact or about a particular account. Okay, so MDM is more of a master data system, and there are tons of them out there. Um, CDP is not an MDM. Okay, next, a CDP isn't necessarily a database. So a lot of times, you know, I'll talk to folks, and they're like, "Oh yeah, so that's now going to be another place where marketing data is going to be stored, right?" It's that's that's not how a CDP works, and you'll see why in a second. Um, but the interesting part is some CDPs do require you to have a third party data warehouse to store the information that comes into a CDP so that you can mine it for you know whatever reason whether it be for analytics uh, analysis you know uh, model building um, uh, you know segmentation etc to make that data available to the features within a CDP you have to store it somewhere else uh, in a lot of cases and so that may be required but uh, it really all depends on you on whether or not the data that is stored because of a CDP becomes another operational database that is accessed for any other reason than just being available to a CDP. Next, a CDP, okay, I'm, I'm throwing, throwing you know, some more acronyms at you, right? MDM, Master Data Management, IPaaS, right? That's your, uh, that's your integration platform as a service or your integration middleware. It's interesting because there are a lot of marketing technology tools that can play the role of middleware and we use them in lots of different ways. And, you know, as, as uh, marketing operations folks, we tend to use the tools that are available to us. And so if you do have a CDP, uh, there is a tendency to think of it as middleware for passing data from one system to another. That is not its primary purpose. And I would like to dissuade you now from thinking about it that way. Although it can be used in that way, that is not its primary purpose. 
Um, and you shouldn't try to explain its value that way when you're trying to justify getting a CDP into your organization. So the last thing, a CDP, just like most of the technologies that are in your marketing technology stack, is not a set it and forget it solution. If you're going to get a CDP, you better be willing to put wood behind that arrow, okay? Marketing data is, is at the very heart of marketing, right? And so this is going to be a, a rich and, um, and, and valuable and actionable set of marketing information within your environment. And because that data is going to be so valuable, it's going to be very, very important that you have someone that is looking after the measurement plan, the strategy of the platform, maintaining it, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of other sort of roles, but if this person is wearing multiple hats, like every other marketing operations person, you're, you're probably not going to get everything you can out of, uh, out of your CDP. So now that you know what a CDP is not, let's talk about what it actually is. So a CDP, CDP stands for customer data platform, which again, in my opinion, this is all opinion. It's yucky. That is yucky. That is a terrible, terrible name for this. I actually like to call it the marketing data platform, okay? the marketing data platform. And the reason why I like to think about it that way, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully all of you kind of get this analogy because it's, it's sort of centered on Marketo itself. So you know how in Marketo, whenever you go to do anything, you can trigger you know, campaigns and emails and all this other stuff. You can trigger based on activities that people do, programs they're a part of, attributes in their lead record, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? All of the information that's available in Marketo is essentially available to you as a way to tr trigger things to happen or filter people to participate in a, in a particular group or campaign, okay? But that's your marketing automation platform. And that's just one place where data is available. You might have other tool sets, other you know, parts to your technology portfolio that do other things like Maybe you have multiple marketing automation platforms. Maybe you have Iterable and Marketo. Maybe you also have a product, uh, a, a product specific email or messaging application um, that you use and you wanna target users for. Uh, you probably have an event management system, right? You have your CRM, so on and so forth, right? There's tons of other ways uh, that you activate your data, not just in Marketo, but Creating segments and groups and all that stuff in Marketo is really just tied to Marketo, okay? Your CDP is like taking all of that good stuff, the activity log that will be in Marketo and the lead database in Marketo and saying, you know what? I'm going to create an Uber set. I want to capture all activities, not just the ones that are happening in Marketo, but that are happening at any marketing touch point that I'm using to, uh, for either inbound or outbound marketing. Okay. When a user interacts with any of my stuff, I want to know in a central point, even if they don't, they're not interacting with anything from Marketo. When a user's lead data changes anywhere within my environment, I want to know about it, even if their lead data doesn't change in Marketo. I need a central point where I can keep tabs on that and where all of this stuff is happening in real time and at high volume. Right. So if you've ever been involved in a large integration projects with Marketo, then you know that you're kind of riding that volume line, right? Where you're like, how many API calls do I have? Should I use the bulk API? How, how many records can sync from SFDC to Marketo within an hour at any given time, right? Like what are my limits? Um, whereas when you think about a CDP, a CDP is built to collect volumes of data in, in, in multiple times uh, versus what Marketo can collect, okay? So when you start thinking about super volume, this is where your CDP can really uh, come in play. And some of the scenarios that uh, where a CDP can really shine or where you're doing, uh, where you need like that centralized activity log for whatever reason, whether it be, you know, for segmentation, for analysis, if you wanna do any kind of data cleansing or standardization before data moves between systems, you can do that in your CDP. If you want to steward data, 
So for example, you want a place where all of your data validation rules as a marketing team will reside. And you want to be able to capture any errors or any, uh, any, any violations of those validation rules. You want to see them, you want to be able to fix them, and you want to augment your validation rules. All of that stuff can happen in this one place, acting like a data stewardship hub. Um, you can do enrichment and synchronization in one point. Right. If you have an enrichment vendor or enrichment vendors, which which is usually the case, um, you don't have to connect each of these places to a certain system, one to Salesforce, one to Marketo or two or three to Salesforce and one to Marketo. And then you have to wait for that round trip from Salesforce to Marketo in order to get full enrichment. You don't have to do that if you enrich in one place and share the data to all your systems from there. You can, uh, you can use a CDP for segmentation. And that is actually one of the most powerful use cases uh, that you can use to justify, uh, to justify a CDP and what I call an audience lab. So a lot of, a lot of times people will ask you, you know, of the entire uh, marketing database, who meeting this criteria is marketable at this very moment, right? Uh, and, and doing that sort of exploration and kind of experimentation with different attributes and trying to figure out what the audience might look like and how much of that audience exists in your database, that sort of exploration can happen with a CDP. And then any critical marketing data analysis, this can be a data source because hopefully it's capturing all or as much of your uh, critical activities and interaction points and, and lead data as possible. So with that said, Let's go into a, a quick visual, and then I'm gonna break it down for you into its component parts. So when I think about a CDP, right, I think about this as the center of the MarTech portfolio, whereas in a lot of uh, architecture diagrams today, we tend to put the marketing automation platform in the middle, right? Everything revolves around Marketo. Well, not really. Everything revolves around Salesforce, right? Uh, that's that's the reality of our world. But when we when we think about things, we tend to think about things in relation to your marketing automation platform. When you have a CDP, you flip the script on that. Now your CDP is at the center. Why? Wherever your data is, that is the center of your world. Okay. That's, that's just reality in marketing. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like the CDP concept because it puts data where it belongs, right there square in the center and you start focusing on enriching that data, okay? But essentially, you know, the, the, the world revolving, the universe around a CDP is all about getting as much information uh, about what's happening uh, with your campaigns, okay? How people are interacting with your uh, with your campaigns, with your website, with your advertisements, with any digital marketing, et cetera, pumping all of those activities into a CDP. Um, synchronizing, uh, sorry, enriching known users, okay, with any data enrichment service, synchronizing those in a continuous loop with other critical systems within your environment, that's your marketing automation platform, your, uh, your CRM, your transactional and e-commerce tools, your support tools, all of that stuff within your environment. Exporting those to, uh, to respected and utilized and operational data storage and analysis facilities in your environment, like you know, your Snowflakes, your Amazon Redshift, uh, and, and making that available to tools like Tableau and Domo. And then a key, using the data that's in your CDP, activities and user attributes, once the user becomes known, right? Uh, to create segments and activating those segments throughout your marketing technology stack. This right here is the one, if you had to leave with anything, the benefit of a CDP is it should give you the power. Any good CDP that you put in your environment should give you the power to easily create and mine, to mine your users, to create segments that you can activate throughout all of the technologies in your marketing technology stack so that you can orchestrate campaigns across multiple channels with all of these users whenever they interact with that particular channel, okay? I don't know of any other way to do this without some sort of manual intervention. If I wanted to take a segment, a user segment, a contact segment and, and activate that segment such that if a user comes in contact with my site, 
They're going to get a similar message that is a part of a campaign theme that is in Marketo that is used for email. And at the same time, they're going to get put in the right nurture. And at the same time, they're going to get put in the right, uh, in the right you know, product marketing campaign, right? We know that whenever they come in contact with that particular piece of content or that particular channel, this is what they're going to see across the board. I don't know of any other technology that can enable your team to do that um, besides a CDP. That's why I get excited about CDPs, okay? So let's break this down a little bit. And let's just take a look at this from, you know, from a perspective of where data is coming from to where data is moving to and kind of how it happens. Right? So similar to, you know, if you're familiar with how Munchkin works, right? Munchkin is on your website. And, um, and when users come to your website for the first time, Marketo can track them as an anonymous user. Right? It doesn't really know who they are, but it knows they're somebody. Right, and it gives them a an identification number. That goes into the Marketo, you know, anonymous activity data database. Okay, um, let's just call it that. Um, and you know, the user with that same Munchkin ID continues to build up anonymous activities, but at some point they're going to fill out a form and become known. It's the same process with a CDP, right? It's a, it's a it's a very similar process, but with a CDP. A CDP can connect up to multiple front end technologies, including your website, but beyond, right? There's CDPs that can connect up to your, you know, digital adware and, and, and all that jazz, right? Where people are interacting and it can capture clicks on those ads and conversions to your websites and, uh, and interactions with your product if you happen to sell a SaaS product. When the user becomes known, the CDP will know too. Right? So you can use identity events um, on forms, on you know, product registrations or whatnot to then convert that number and assign it a user now that you know who they are. It's the very same process that happens with Marketo. When a user uh, converts on a form, the Munchkin ID that's stored on their device is now associated with their record and all of their anonymous activity now becomes known. Very similar process in the CDP. All right, so the CDP gets all that good information, all those good interactions or activities, and the user's record, the contact record starts building up for that person. By the way, at the same time that the CDP is gathering this information, it can also be sharing this information to systems that can actually receive that type of anonymous data. Next, once the data is in the CDP, you know, maybe you can identify an account based on IP address. Maybe there's some other information that is being captured by the CD, CDP that allows you to reach out to these third-party data enrichment services as part of the CDP configuration. You can actually configure when data comes in, I'm gonna manipulate it this way. I can transform it. There are specific rules you can set up to standardize the data no matter where it's coming from. And you can also do supersede type things. So I could say, look, if data comes in from this one vendor, uh, then stop enriching because that one vendor is my top vendor. But if not, fall back to this one and grab this information, but don't put it there, put it in this other field and mark the record this way, right? So you can do some pretty gnarly stuff um, with, with a CDP when data comes into your system and when you process it. And then clearly enrich data in, in all of these places. One of the nice things about enriching data in a single place is that you know you, you don't necessarily have to enrich if the, if all of these enrichment sources have similar data you don't have to enrich in one field right you can enrich multiple fields one dedicated to each vendor or multiples dedicated to each vendor and then you can do your analysis on what kind of completeness and quality you're getting from each vendor you can't do that sort of analysis if your data is being enriched everywhere. There's far too many touch points and the analysis is inaccurate. So when the data comes into a CDP, if you're enriching at that point, you write out to your database, that is probably the most accurate uh, um, export of data that you're gonna get to do a, a nice comprehensive analysis on an ongoing basis of the accuracy and the, the validity of the data that's coming from your enrichment vendors. Anyway, you get all that stuff and you send it to your critical systems. You synchronize to Salesforce, you synchronize to Marketo, you synchronize to, to your e-commerce systems, you synchronize to your support systems, whatever they may be. Every single system is receiving data 
in you can you can send it in real time you can send it on a schedule but they're receiving the same information at the same time and whenever a change is made to any of these systems you can also configure that change to come back to your cdp once again run through your process and get synced back to all systems so everything stays in sync okay rather than using salesforce as the master and synchronizing from there to everywhere else but then support changes something on a customer record that doesn't get synced, synced until that night, right? Everything is being updated at the same time. And you can actually do this at scale. You're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of records in a matter of minutes that are going through here instead of, you know, you're, you're, you're being limited to, you know, an, an API, uh, uh, you know, rate limit, like from Marketo or something like that, which I know you're probably all familiar with, okay? So anyway, Anytime a user interacts with Salesforce, let's say there, you know, there, there's a new opportunity on that user. That is a new activity that gets tracked inside the CDP. If there's a, if that opportunity pertains to a particular service line or product line, that specificity can be captured in the CDP so that you're building an organizational activity log. And these are things that you can use to create your segments or to trigger people to become part of a segment. Okay. And then I talked a little bit about already about uh, the data storage and analysis piece, but Again, the key part here is your segmentation. So now you're creating your segments and you're saying, you know what? This is my, um, my mid funnel product nurture um, uh, you know, campaign, but it's not just in Marketo. I have lots of different touch points for whenever a user comes to my website, I wanna keep them in this nurture and I wanna keep them on this path. So I have these users in my segment, I'm gonna put them in a list in Marketo, right? I'm gonna put them in this list or add this attribute so that maybe intercom uh, will, will respond automatically when they uh, use the product or come to my site, okay? This concept is called data activation. And because it's all done via the segment that the user belongs to, that you've created, um, you know, it's all orchestrated to the same group across all of these channels. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense to everybody. Because that in essence is it, right? When you're considering uh, putting in a CDP, these are the kinds of functions, features and benefits you're looking for, right? You wanna make sure that you can grab as much data from as many anonymous and known sources as possible on the front end. You wanna make sure there's as much connectivity as possible to internal uh, critical applications. You want to make sure you can enrich data in a single place. If you are using, let's say, Snowflake or AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, whatever your current um, storage service is that you use, you want to make sure that CDP supports that data storage service in case you want to hook it up. You want to make sure that CDP has segmentation power and an easy way to activate segments, right? The last thing you wanna be doing is exporting a list of people and then uploading them manually into all of your systems, right? That's, there's, there's no value in that, all right? But those are the things that you, you absolutely wanna look for. Beyond that, you're talking about, you know, you're talking the technical limitations, right? How many, uh, how many activities can this thing ingest in real time at any given time? every 20 seconds, every minute, because you're, gonna, you're probably gonna end up throwing a lot of stuff at it, right? How does it standardize data? And what facilities does it have to enable you to standardize data before activating it in your downstream systems? Those are the kind of, you know, those are the kinds of features that you're looking for when putting in a CDP. Um, the, the last thing that I typically get asked is like, okay, well, what, what are the CDPs that I should look for, right? Everybody claims that they're a CDP and, uh, you know, sometimes you can d use marketing magic and call yourself a CDP when you're just a glorified Google sheet. <laughs> that's not the case. I'm just kidding. But um, my, my favorite one at the moment and the one that's climbing the charts in the, in, in the, the uh, you name it, magic quadrants um, is, uh, is segment. Segment is, I, I try to remove them from the center of this because I use this so often, uh, but Segment is great because it's a, it's a, it's a tool that is um, accessible to marketers. I've, I believe that it's built for marketers. 
Um, it's got a lot of facilities that you know you can you can dig into. It supports um, it supports the marketing automation platforms that marketing operations teams are familiar with, um, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the the connections, consumers, and um, and data storage locations that are part of your marketing technology stacks. And above all, it makes this stuff easy. Um, there's others out there. Uh, Informatica uh, has a, has a CDP. Adobe has a CDP. Segment has a CDP. Um, one thing that I that I uh, I put out there for you to think about as well is I I tend not to my personal opinion my personal bias is I don't like buying everything from one place. Um, it makes my switching costs very high, um, and and it just kind of pigeonholes me right into specific solutions. And so I'm a big proponent of of uh, trying to not put too many eggs in one basket, you know? And so if I have, you know, a, a Adobe Engage, Marketo Engage, you know, I might get visible from them because that's, you know, that's super tight with, um, with, with Engage, but uh, I'm probably not gonna get my CDP from them, for example, right? I, I might wanna separate that out. Or if I don't have Adobe Engage and I have, you know, an iterable and I have a really, um, and I have, uh, you know, a good IT team that works very closely with me and it's going to be willing to do some of the customization that's required for Adobe CDP, maybe that's the route to go, right? But most importantly uh, in your choice, I think, is democratization. How democratized, how decentralized is your marketing operations function? How much power do your internal clients, internal customers have? How much do you want to give to them? Because if it's, you know, I, I, they are a part of my community, we all have control over the MarTech stack, then you're gonna to wanna to have something that has a very good UI and make some of this functionality accessible while at the same time giving you control, right? Over, uh, you know, authorization to specific features. But if, if, uh, if you are, if you, you know, you are closer to an enterprise, you have a lot of governance in place, you do not have a decentralized or democratized model. It is all a center of excellence type deal. Then a more, uh, you know, a more customizable um, and inaccessible tool uh, or platform might give you, you know, what you're looking for, right? Like a Informatica or, you know, a, a oh my goodness, it's escaping me. A treasure, treasure data, right? A CDP might be something that you should consider. Okay. All right, and that is it for me. So Amanda, you wanna, um, wanna open it up for discussion? Yeah, absolutely.